Okay, welcome back to Anne of Green Gables. We are on chapter three. We are on pages 22 to 28. So page 22, Marilla Cuthbert is surprised. So remember, when we last left Matthew, he was bringing Anne home. They had just gotten to Green Gables. Anne was super sleepy. And Marilla still doesn't know it's a girl. Did they want a girl? They wanted a boy. Luminous, depre uh, deprecatingly, tra tragical, reconciled, distinctly, reproachfully, meekly, depths of despair. Um, gable, matron, raiment, temp temptuous. Temptuous. Petribution. Set her face against. Pretty kettle of fish. Predilection. Bewitched resolutely. Here we go. I don't know. We'll have to talk about it when we get there. Resolutely. All right. Here we go. Marilla Cuthbert is surprised. Page 22 for you, yes. Um, mine is 27 because my writing is bigger. Marilla Cuthbert is surprised. Marilla came briskly forward as Matthew opened the door. But when her eyes fell on the odd little figure in the stiff, ugly dress, with long braids of red hair and the eager, luminous eyes, she stopped short in amazement. Is luminous one of them? What do you think luminous means? 22? Uh, dizzy. You think luminous like means... Dizzy or like, out, like, yeah, like out of them. Why would you think bright? Oh. You're not that far off, but why would you think bright? Uh, okay, so you said, okay, I know aluminum. Aluminum is a uh, is reflective. Um illuminate aluminum yes so because we recognize part of the root it means emitting or reflecting light emitting so emitting means giving off or reflecting light now if you've ever seen a per a kid like when they're super happy their eyes get bright and shiny that's what we're talking about luminous bright sparkly shiny light lighted eyes so kind of like a mirror almost yeah mirrors probably similar um matt she stopped short in amazement matthew cuthbert Who's that, she ejaculated. Where is the boy? V there wasn't any boy, said Matthew wretchedly. There was only her. He nodded at the child, remembering that he had never even asked her name. No boy? But there must have been a boy, insisted Marilla. We sent word to Mrs. Spencer to bring a boy. Well... She didn't. She she brought her. I asked the station master, and, and I had to bring her home. She couldn't be left there, no matter where the mistake had come in. Well, this is a pretty piece of business, ejaculated Marilla. Now, I have a picture in mind, so if you want to take a minute. This is what the author thinks, or the illustrator thought it might look like. Uh, that's how they pictured Matthew. That is actually not how Matthew looks well, in the, the movie, though. He looks I a bit different. I want to watch the movie. Do you 
movie sounds good. Oh my word, the movie is great. I tried to see You know, it's one of those things that there are some movies you don't mind watching over and over and over again. This is one of those movies. Yeah, old I don't mind watching over and over again. Well, I've told it five times. See like six times. All right. During this dialogue, the child had remained silent, her eyes roving from one to the other, all the animation fading out of her face. Suddenly, she seemed to grasp the full meaning of what had been said. Dropping her precious carpet bag, she sprang forward a step and clasped her hands. You don't want me, she cried. You don't want me because I'm not a boy? I might have expected it. Nobody ever did want me. I might have known it was all too beautiful to last. I might have known nobody really did want me. Oh, what shall I do? I'm, I'm going to burst into tears. Burst into tears she did, sitting down on a chair by the table, flinging her arms out upon it and burying her face in them. She proceeded to cry stormily. Marilla and Matthew looked at each other to say, uh, deprecatingly across the stove. Yep, I will, I will come back to it. Neither one of them knew what to say or do. Finally, Marilla stepped lamely into the breach. What do you think deprecatingly means? No. Um. Okay, so I heard somebody whisper, they should have raised their hand, and they said, sad, Miss Richardson, so they're on the right track. I was looking at the beginning of the word, D-R, or D-E-P-R-E, -E, reminds me of the word depress. So the friend said sad. So this means, it actually means tending to belittle belittle. So belittle really makes really uh really similar to be little makes somebody feel little. So tending to belittle someone, it is, it's one word, someone or something. So deprecatingly is um, making somebody or something like, uh, like feel little, feel small. So like, oh my word, that. Oh, look at your puppy. That was a goat this morning. Now, were you trying to make me feel little? No, but I did feel little because it did not look like I really wanted it to look. Now, am I upset with you guys? I was upset with the way it looked. Now, the person that got it, put the both of the feet down and it looks actually like a goat when it's on its feet when it's sitting up or laying down on its back it doesn't so much look like a goat but when you put its belly down it looks like a goat well i guess if you see it around you'll know who got it all right so because currently it's sitting in the building somewhere so if you see it you might know so it says so Matthew and Marilla looked at each other deprecatingly across the stove. Now, are they, did they plan, like it kind of reminds me also of despair. Like, oh, did we just do that? Did we just make her cry, right? And they're like, oh, I can't believe she's that upset over it, right? Now, imagine you were an orphan, which means you have no mom and no dad. They died. And you've been staying in an orphanage with other kids who don't have moms or dads or parents that gave them up. And all of a sudden, you're like, woohoo, good news. You get to go to somebody's house, right? And you're like, woohoo, I might actually have my own real family. 
And then they say, oh, sorry, you're not what we wanted. We wanted a boy and not a girl. How would you feel? They don't want you. There is a very real possibility they're going to send her back. We don't want you. Would you be really upset? Yes. yes. Because at least you get to meet someone. Yeah, and then go back to daycare. It's not, it's not daycare, but yeah. And, and I don't know. Are you guys familiar with the story Annie, the musical Annie? No. <gasps> Together at last. Together forever. We're dying or not. They not can't separate. Oh my gosh, you guys haven't seen one of the best musicals ever. Um, Annie, the story of Annie is she's an orphan. She lives in an orphanage with Miss Hannigan. Oh, I have. And uh, she, uh, for like a newspaper article or whatever, this rich guy named Daddy Warbucks. Ooh. Daddy Warbucks. Um, sends his, like, secretary in to get an orphan. Now, Daddy Warbucks is expecting she's going to come home with a boy. And she comes home with a girl. And then there's this huge story. And then there's a great ending. Ish. But, um, well, because there's some bad stuff that happens. What? Um, We'll have to wait and see. All right, so, um, finally Marilla stepped lamely into the breach. Well, well, there's no need to cry so about it. Yes, there is need. The child raised her head quickly, revealing a tear-stained face and trembling lips. You would cry, too, if you were an orphan and had come to a place you thought was going to be home and found that they didn't want you because you were a boy. Oh, this is the most tragical thing that ever happened to me. What do you think a tragical thing is? <coughs> what saddest yeah so um so it's like the saddest thing that's ever happened tragical has tragic or tragedy in it so tragical would be the saddest thing i'm just gonna use that because i think that's a great explanation saddest thing um it means regrettably serious or unpleasant saddest thing Thank you. Something like a reluctant smile, rather rusty from long disuse, mellowed Marilla's grim expression. Well, don't cry anymore. We're not going to turn you out of doors tonight. You'll have to stay here until we investigate this affair. What's your name? The child hesitated for a moment. Will you please call me Cordelia, she said eagerly. Call you Cordelia? Is that your name? No. It's not exactly my name, but I would love to be called Cordelia. It's such a perfectly elegant name. I don't know what on earth you mean. If Cordelia isn't your name, what is? Anne Shirley reluctantly faltered forth the owner of that name. But, oh, please do call me Cordelia. It can't matter much what you call me if I'm only going to be here a little while, can it? And Anne is such an unromantic name. Unromantic fiddlestick, said the unsympathetic Marilla. Anne is a real good, plain, sensible name. You've no need to be ashamed of it. Oh, I'm not ashamed of it, explained Anne. Only I like Cordelia better. I've always imagined that my name was Cordelia. 
at least I always have of late years. When I was young, I used to imagine it was Geraldine, but I like Cordelia better. But if you call me Anne, please call me Anne, spelled with an E. Anna. Anne with an E. No, she's going by Ann, spelled with an E. So you can spell Ann, A-N-N, or you can spell Ann, A-N-N-E. So my friend's name is Sarah, but her name is Sarah, spelled with an H. So Sarah can be spelled S-A-R-A or S-A-R-A-H. There's other, like, there's other names of Sarah or other versions of it, but those are two common ones. So she wants you to call her Anne, but remember it's spelled with an E. What difference does it make how it's spelled? Asked Marilla with another rusty smile as she picked up the teapot. Oh, it makes such a difference. It looks so much nicer. When you hear a name pronounced, can't you always see it in your mind? Just as if it was printed out, I can. And a-N-N -N looks dreadful, but A-N-N-E looks so much more distinguished. If you'll only call me Anne, spelled with an E, I shall try to reconcile myself to not being called Cordelia. Reconcile? Yep. What do you think reconcile means? Yeah, so I'll put up with it. Um, it specifically means to restore to friendship or harmony, but um, I'll allow it or put up with it. And reconcile. Yeah. So a lot of times they talk about a friendship. So if you are grumpy with your friend and you've called your friend names and your friends called you you names and you like shake hands and your friends again, you've reconciled the relationship. You agreed to be friends again. You'll put up with them again. That's what friends do though. Well, sometimes they reconcile and sometimes they don't. Very well, then, and spelled with an E. Can you tell us how this mistake came to be made? We sent word to Mrs. Spencer to bring us a boy. Were there no boys at the asylum? Uh, oh, yes, there was an abundance of them. But Mrs. Spencer said distinctly that you wanted a girl of about 11 years old. And the matron said she thought, I would do. I'll get to it in just a second. You don't know how delighted I was. I couldn't sleep all night last night for the joy. Oh, she added reproachfully, turning to Matthew. Why didn't you tell me at the station that you didn't want me and leave me there? If I hadn't seen the white way of delight and the lake of shining waters, it wouldn't be so hard. Distinctfully, what do you think dis distinct I'm sorry distinctly what do you think distinctly means when Mrs. Spencer said distinctly that you wanted a girl of about 11 what what did you say no not with the snarl so they, she wasn't being grumpy, but that was a good try. If I speak like this, I will understand what I'm saying. You said saying. If I speak like this, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So which one would have been distinctly? The first one or the second one? The second one. So when it's a clear, when it's clear and unmistakable. Oh. 
So some of my letter, most of my, most of the time, my printing is unmistakable, right? But every, so most of the time, my printing is distinct. But sometimes you're like, Miss Richardson, what does it, what letter is that, right? So that's not distinct. Reproachfully. So Anne says, oh, she added reproachfully, turning to Matthew. Why didn't you tell me at the station that you didn't want me and leave me there? What do you think reproachfully means? Come back how? Oh, so you see approach, A-P-O, approach, approach. Um, is she happy or not happy? She's not happy. So what do you think reproach means? Reproach means she's telling them with her words, with her tone, that she's mad. She's mad. So it's like a criticism to criticize sharply. Or disapproval. So it's kind of like what I did when I went into music today. I reproached the two students that the music teacher talked to me about, right? Sorry, thanks. So I reproached the two people by asking them questions. Was it obvious I wasn't happy with them? Yes, because my tone said I wasn't happy, my voice said I wasn't happy, and the minute they knew I was talking to them, they were right there with me, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, you just figured out. Mm-hmm. Took you a minute, didn't it? I didn't really that music, though. I did. What on earth does she mean, demanded Marilla, staring at Matthew. She, she's just referring to some conversation we had on the road, said Matthew hastily. I'm going to put the mayor in, Marilla. Have tea ready when I come back. Did Mrs. Spencer bring anybody over besides you, continued Marilla, when she, when Matthew had gone out? She brought Lily Jones for herself. Lily is only five years old, and she is very beautiful. She has nut brown hair. If I were very beautiful and had nut brown hair, would you keep me? No. We want a boy to help Matthew on the farm. A girl would be of no use to us. Take off your hat. I'll lay it and your bag on the hall table. Anne took off her hat meekly. What do you think meekly means? Not neatly. If you just found out that they don't want to keep you. Do you feel really good about yourself? No. You're sad or you're upset. So you're, you're going to like take off your hat and throw it. Yes. Yeah, so. I've angry. Yeah, so. Do you think being angry with the people they don't want to keep you is going to help you stay? No. I'm going to tell you right. I'm going to tell you right now. That if you take off your hat and you throw it at me, is that going to keep you in the room? Yeah. You might be making a plan, especially if it hits me, right? 
Now, so meekly means it's not violent. Not violent. Or strong. So a lot of times they think about you might be meek as a mouse. If you are a mouse, and we talked about Poppy at the beginning, right? Meek, meek as a mouse. So we talked about Poppy at the beginning. If you are meek, like a mouse, you could be a cat's dinner. You could be an owl's dinner. You could be a fox's dinner. You, porcupines don't eat mice. But you could be all kinds of dinner for all kinds of people. Now, a snake's dinner, yep. So, so meek is not, vi not violent or strong. I got to finish. Matthew came back presently, and they sat down to supper. Oh, so now they're calling tea supper. But Anne could not eat. In vain she nibbled at the bread and butter and pecked at the crab apple preserve out of the little scallop dish by her plate. She did not really make any headway at all. You're not eating anything, said Marilla, sharply eyeing her as if it were a serious shortcoming. Anne sighed. <sighs> all right, we are going to need to stop right here. Let's look at the questions really quick. All right, we're, we'll talk about it in a minute. All right, so you can do number one. Why does Anne burst into tears? That's all that we can do. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.